Well, I got out of here hoping to catch some walleye. Uh, thinking it would be spring floats since it's June. There's a bunch of melt going on. And there's like zero flow. Like, it's crazy. Like, Columbia River is barely moving. <laughs> um, so they must have not much power demand right now or something or holding back a little bit of water. Normally, this section of the river is cranking. While I tend to orient to the current pretty heavily. And I'm always looking for those seams and areas that are could hold fish. And with low flows, there's really no seams. And they can spread out. They tend to be a little bit more lackluster on the bite, too. So I'm going to have to try some new strategies here today. So Okay. Let's see if we can't find some walleye in this slack water. Way out here at 120 feet deep. And barely a half mile an hour of current. It's, I mean, I'm dead center in the river here. At least where the current's flowing. 120 feet deep walleye fishing. It's crazy. Let's see if there's anything down there. Fish on. Finally got something to bite this morning. Way down there at 120 feet. There's just no current this morning. Which is so weird for spring. You know, late spring there should be a bunch of runoff, but I'm just not feeling it. Like basically the Columbia River just feels like a lake right now. Yes, nice walleye. Crazy. People in the Midwest would look at you crazy if you tell them you're pulling up walleye from 120 feet deep, but when the current goes slack like this, that's where they go here. They go way, way, way out deep, especially the males, which is what I like to eat. Chase deer. Have a little less mercury in them. There we go. Go ahead and reset. We've got that one on a VMC Moon Eye Jig with the crawler on there. One of the things I found with these walleye, especially when we get these slack water conditions, which I wasn't expecting today, is that is that in order to trigger the bite, you need a certain drift speed. And right now, the Columbia is flowing at about like where I normally would catch these fish is flowing at about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 miles per hour of my natural drift which is just not enough to trigger a strike for some reason. I can go in front of those fish at that speed, they won't touch it. So what I gotta do is turn my bow downstream and start basically uh, moving myself at about one mile per hour. You can go a little bit slower, a little bit faster, basically that 0.75 to 1.2 range and put this gear in front of these fish's face and have it moving along at a certain speed and that seems to be what triggers the bite. If I go slower it seems like they just don't trigger the bite. If I go fast I guess I just pass over them too quickly. They're very finicky I think that's you know the great challenge of walleye is figuring out these little subtle details that they want. Getting to the bottom is a lot easier when the current is uh, basically dead like it is today because my gear will just go straight down. It's a long way down to 118 feet. Okay, and then I'm going to start just pushing the kayak forward at trying to keep it at about one mile per hour, which doesn't take much. So I've got a little bit of push behind me from the current. I don't have any wind yet. So I'm doing this technique. I'm not actually going to get a perfect vertical presentation. My jig's actually going to be behind me a little bit. It's going to be trailing behind me. Uh, because the boat is actually moving faster than the current that I'm drifting through. Now normally in a lake situation, I would be running bottom walkers or something like that in a slack water situation, but here I'm fishing so deep that, you know, running bottom walkers at 100 feet deep to 80 feet deep is just not realistic. I mean, I suppose I could um, if I brought some really heavy, like, four or five ounce bottom walkers. Um, but you have to either custom make those or 
find them, which they're very, very difficult to find. I'm going to go over to a spot where I know they like to hold shallow, but I rarely ever get them to bite there when there's no current, so we'll, we'll try going through that section with uh, this jig to see what happens. This is a little bit shallower, it's 65 feet. There we go, that one. That was at 55 feet. So I found them at 120 and at 55. Go figure. Nice fish. There we go. Another one on the jig. Just goes to show like when you do bottom walkers, um, there's a reason why we troll at one mile per hour. Because that is what they want. I was jigging that. Moving it along at about one mile per hour. There we go. That's eater mail. I think this is what drives people nuts about walleye is the it's just how variable they can be. You can literally catch fish from 100 feet to, or even over 100 feet to 20 feet in the same body of water on the same day. That really makes it challenging to lock in on a pattern with these fish. They're just very difficult to predict where they're going to be that day or where they're going to be feeding. I can see nothing on the fish finder, by the way. There's no indication of where these fish are. You, you can't see them on sonar. You can't see them on down imaging. You can't see them on side imaging. They're just sitting hard to the bottom. And that uh, makes it really hard. Oh, that was a bite. Dang it. Missed it. Missed it. It's a lot easier to miss the bite, though, when you're... Don't have that straight vertical presentation. There's more line played out between you and the fish and the angle isn't prime for hook set. You can just pull it straight away from their mouth when you have it line paid out like this. Rather than going straight up, you almost always hook them right to the top of the mouth. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> no night crawler left. Totally stripped it. Okay, try that again. Nightcrawler completely gone. That would normally never happen during a vertical presentation. I would detect the bite a lot more efficiently. There's one. Got him. Oh, yeah. It's off. Dang it. That sucks. Did not get him. Felt him. So hard to get a good hook set. Got a little bit of wind pushing me now. Right at right about this right speed, one mile per hour. God damn it! There we go. There's a fish. Slow and steady pressure. You don't want to pump, pump and reel, not with the uh, single point hooks like this. It can pop out. It's a nice walleye. Walton. Oh! <laughs> Changes his mind there. These little males here are perfect eater size. I just love how firm their flesh is and flaky when they're this size. They get bigger, they get a little bit chewier, but I like them when they're this size. I'm definitely getting much more action on Nightcrawler than I am on anything else, which on the days that, that uh, the presentation's slower, the bait does seem to always prevail, which makes sense. I'm just using a full Nightcrawler here, but I bunch up a bunch of meat on there, make sure that at least two parts get over the worm keeper on these VMC Moon Eye jigs, and I just make a couple loops and then leave about a third of the crawler hanging off the back there a lot of times 
if I just feel that first tap, I'm gonna wait for that second tap. So they bite the tail and they suck in that jig. And uh, that helps a lot in terms of uh, increasing your landing ratio. Feel some sand down there. That's usually where I find the walleye. There he is. Got him. I knew he'd be in there with that sand and rock and cobble. 89 feet. Crazy. Little males. That's probably why I'm getting stripped of these little 14 inch males. So you can see his stomach up in his mouth there. That's barotrauma. And walleye, unlike trout, even if you take them back down to depth with uh, a release device, they don't seem to recover as well as trout do or rockfish from barotrauma. So I always harvest uh, these fish if it's legal to do so. And uh, there's really no point in throwing a fish that's going to die back. I'll still get a decent fillet off this even though it isn't a huge fish. Okay, I'm on the bottom. And now basically what I'm doing is I'm feeling the bottom for what type of substrate it is and I'm really looking for predominantly sand and occasionally hitting a rock right now I'm just mostly hitting solid rock I can feel hard tap um, when it touches the bottom just why it's important to run a really light braid so I got like an eight pound braid on here because I'm not relying on my fish finder to tell me what's the substrate down there. I'm, I'm really looking for feeling. Now I'm on some sand, so if I get, you know, fairly continuous sand, ooh, there's a bite, um, that's, uh, that's where they will be, is on that sand. I just missed a bite just as I moved on to that sand there. Hopefully it didn't strip me. That might have been another one. There he is, got him. I, got, I missed a couple bites there, but I felt that one hit. I knew I was going to be in some fish, so I started feeling sand again. There you go. Some gold from the deep. All right, let's get a new worm on there and reset. I'm gonna go back and look for that same substrate. We're gonna feel that soft, soft, and occasional tap. And then that's where I've been getting bit. Bite zone has shifted. Earlier it was very deep, over 100 feet. Then I picked up some fish up in the 40, 50 foot range. Now I'm back out chasing fish in the 80 foot range. All right, we're gonna reset, but I'm gonna put more bait on. I think that might be key. More meat. While I like to eat at Arby's, because they bring the meat, more meat. See if that makes a difference. We got the meat. Oh, there he is, got him. That was a very light bite. There we go. That's so cool. Boom. Number seven in the boat. One more to go for my limit. There you go. Not bad. It definitely seems like more meat is the uh, the better, better strategy. Which, like I said, when they have a lot of time to look at it and inspect it, then that makes sense, right? It's got to look like food and smell like food less of a reaction strike. When I'm drifting, you know, at 1, 1 1.2, and I'm ripping a blade bait or jigging, I feel like the strikes are a lot more vicious. Today, it's just like tap, 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 very light. Let's see if we can't get number eight for my limit here. Oh, there he is. I felt him double tap that one. Nice. That just goes to show you have to kind of 
adapt to these changing conditions on river systems. It's a nice walleye. And that sometimes you can just jig with the current, and sometimes you just have to create that ideal presentation speed by just adding a little bit of propulsion downstream. It's all about boat control, which is what I've always said is key to these deep water walleye. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. That's my eight fish for the day. I'll see you next time. I'll put links to all of the products I use today in the description below. If you have any questions, just let me know. And I'll see you out in the water. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.